Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my my comrade, uh, compadre, co-worker, uh, colleague, confidant. I thought confidant. Was where you were going with that. We got five C's there, and uh, he is the one, the only George Camel with a K, and uh, he's playing hurt today. Got a got a got a got a throat issue going on, but he's not contagious. I've had him screened. And I trust tested. you with my life, Ken. And uh, so we've got a, uh, you can't see it here, but I put a little plexiglass thing here that between us. So I think everything's going to be all right, but he's playing hurt. But I'm glad you're here, pal. I can't miss this. No. It's my favorite day of the week with my favorite person. Well, we have a lot of fun and uh, we're going to have fun today in helping you. So let me set the table. George is the money expert. I'm the work expert, or at least that's what they tell us we are. And so we say it. Don't and believe so, the hype. Uh, you know, your work issues are always money related. So if I can help you get unstuck, if I can help you pivot, uh, because your greatest wealth building tool is your income, and I'm the income guy for Ramsey Solutions and, and love working with George. So he's got his uh, Gap Kids uh, denim jacket on. and Oshkosh uh, Bagosh. Oshkosh Bagosh. He's ready Credit to where go. credit's due. I'm trying to look hip with the young sweatshirt today. Young? Okay. Is it not? I don't know what's hip anymore. Neither do I. Why do I even We are say not that? fashionistas. Well, I put that out there for you to, to, to smack me, and you were very kind today. That was a little pickleball for yeah, you. I could tell you're under the weather. You can. Yeah. No, I can't. But Listen, I do want to get you out to play pickleball. Consummate professionals. You, you, you want to come out and play pickleball? I feel like I wouldn't be good at it. I'm not good at ping pong or tennis, and it tells me I'm probably not great at pickleball. It's probably true, which is why I want you to come out. Easy win. I'll, Easy I'll stick win. to radio. All right, good deal. Dalton is up next in Owensboro, Kentucky. Dalton, how can we help? Uh, how y'all doing? So Good. I'm running a little predicament. I start an apprenticeship program, and uh, basically how it works is this job. I work for him for two or three years, and then I basically get the full-time, like, regular job. It's the state police. Okay. So my starting income for this apprenticeship is really low. It, uh, it's 24000 is the salary with the possibility of overtime as much as I want. It's, I have to drive 170 miles round trip every day to work. And so with the salary being so low and uh, the drive so far, I need the most economical way to travel while keeping money in the bank account. Is there no option to move closer to this? Because it seems like you're going to be making the move at some point, yes? Uh, no. So when I actually get the... Uh, like state trooper job, I'll be located closer to home. Okay, I see. Okay. Could you? So just, uh, where? Where's three. home? Are you renting right now? Uh, no, I live with my parents right now. So but could you go rent months. somewhere closer to that area for three years? Uh, no, because the I mean the, it's a big city, so uh, anywhere near it's going to be a big portion of my paycheck. I don't know anyone up there to share a house with. Could you get some roommates and get on Facebook and make some connections? Uh, that's a possibility. I'm trying to stay home because I don't want to have to enter lease agreements. And I don't know that you're going to survive 170 miles George. for three years, dude. That's I like, you got to choose your heart here. That's hard. Really hard. All while making like, minimum wage at this point. I mean, 24 grand, are you going to be able to survive off of that? Yeah, I'll be I'll be able to survive. It's just, it's just going to be tight. So, like, uh, with me preferring to stay at home, I mean, I'm trying to explore all my options here, of is, course. Is there another option to become a state trooper outside of this? Yes, but uh, this program, like, guarantees me a spot to go, like, in the academy. I've already done all my testing. Will you and, have uh, when I do? Will you have hours where you can work a second job? Uh, possibly, but with this position, they, as soon as I get certified in this position, they offer all the overtime I want to work. Okay. So how long will it take before you're eligible for overtime? Depends when they can certify me. They're going to send me out of state to certify me. Uh, do you have a ballpark? Dalton, we're trying to help you out. Do you have a ballpark idea 
Uh, hopefully within the next half year. I mean, at most, okay. worst case scenario. All right, so here, here's why I'm digging here. George, this is what I'm thinking. I want to get George in on here because I want George to, to dive in on the budgeting piece. But let's just say it's six months to get certified. Uh, you may be able to drive that, bite a stick, and just keep driving like that, and you're staying at home, keeping your expenses low. But once you get the option for overtime, I think you've got to move there because the overtime is going to give you much more income, and you do what George is talking about, one or two or three roommates, and and then and then you're okay. But this this you are not going to be able to do this for three years. I'm here to tell you. I'd be shocked if you can put up with that mentally. Do you know what the overtime would pay? Uh, the overtime would be the time and a half, so the hourly rate comes out to like twelve. So I'd be looking at like eighteen an hour overtime. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure the overtime was worth it, even comparatively to getting a second or third job that could pay twenty five bucks an hour. But it sounds like that's probably on par. And I would rather you get the experience working overtime, so that you're even more equipped when you step into this role. Does overtime uh, include things like uh, helping big churches get their people in and out on Sunday? Is that something you can do on the side as well, or is that considered overtime? Uh, no, that's not considered overtime. My friend, then I'd be doing security at high school football games. Uh, I tell you what, I know policemen who do the old uh, traffic control Very in front lucrative. of big churches. It's extremely lucrative. So th- this is there's a way for you to make decent money in that three year period. How old are you? I'm 18. Dude, if I was 18, I'd have five roommates. I'd just be doing whatever it takes. Yeah. But I'm not driving. What is this? Three and a half hours round trip every day? Uh, about uh, two and a half hours. Now you're a state trooper. You got to drive the speed limit now. <laughs> can't be breaking the laws. Uh, not, not, not a state trooper yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So he's yeah, cool. But you can't be getting tickets when you're in the program and driving there. You know, that's not going <laughs> to look good on the old resume. Here's the point. What I'm looking at now. All right. Is, so the, the car I drive is a Dodge Charger, and there and back gets about 23 miles a gallon. So I've been doing the math and all that, and that's going to cost me the same as I get, like, an electric vehicle. Please don't. Not, not, this is not the solution. No? It's not about the no. car. It's not about the mileage It's savings. moving. You have – now, if you stay home, that will bring your budget to where all you really need is gas and insurance at that point, Right. Yes. And so you're going to be able to make that work on 24000 And so I'm not concerned about that. Now, if you move and you get a few roommates and you got a little more expenses on your side, that's when the overtime might be needed to help you make ends meet and still have a life at 18. But uh, I'll hook you up with one year of every dollar premium to help you make a plan for every dollar, whether it's twenty four grand or thirty six grand with overtime, whatever that is. You just got to make a plan. Now, however much you have that month is how much you can spend. And uh, you have no debt. Uh, no, well, the current charger I have, it's 250 a month. Oh boy, let's get rid of that car payment and that'll help with your budget, my friend. So either pay it off fast or if it's, it sounds like it's more than your half of your annual income. So I might sell that thing and get an old Prius or something that has good gas uh, mileage. That's exactly what I would do. I don't want to take any shots at our good friends at Dodge, but uh, ooh, the reliability ratings on the old Charger aren't good. You don't want to be putting those miles on that, George. You might look cool, but you'll be broke. That's the problem. And it'll break down. Watch out. Hey, don't move. More calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. The question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. With 19 service brands nationwide, you can find reliable help from great locally owned businesses like AirServe, Mr. Appliance, and Drive Vent Wizard. Visit Neighborly.com today for help with just about anything for your home. Today's question comes from Charlie in Arizona. Currently, I work at a call center job where they constantly change processes without training us on the new stuff, constant system errors, lack of good communication, issues in the company with vendor communication, ven- managers not caring, and a host of other things that could and should be fixed. All boiling into longer call times for us, which hurts our performance scores. I've made suggestions, laid out solutions, and all of it ignored. All things that could improve the circumstances for everyone, including boosting business. Though without a college degree, they ignore me. I have said stuff to coworkers who just shrug it off. As if us having consistent system problems is just part of the job, but it greatly hurts us. Do we have to put up with tons of errors, or am I right to try to improve things? Am I just complaining and spoiled, or are my coworkers complacent? They seem to regard me with an air of annoyance. Wow. Yes. Yes to everything you just said. (laughs) All of it can be true. It can be true. Um... If you're being treated with an air of annoyance from your coworkers, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that there's too much of whatever it is you're putting out there and that you can't change it. Um, what's laid out here is really what we need to focus on, Charlie, and that is you're at a call center. And call centers by nature are very formulaic, very chaotic, a lot of turnover, and they should be run better. And I think that you are, uh, you're right to say, I think it should be better. It bothers me. But you're at a place now where you, it looks to me like you've hit hit your lid. And and what I mean by the lid is, is whether Charlie's right or wrong, George, whether he's a little bit too persnickety uh, or whatever, whatever, it's, it's not a good fit for him. And at some point we got to go, it's call center and things have gotten progressively worse. And I'm going to turn into this big, giant ball of resentment if I don't move on. You've tried. You've raised your hand. It's been ignored. For whatever reason, you got to move on. Yeah. And what I'm seeing here, I've never heard of someone who's like, I spent 25 years of my career at the call center, finally retiring. This is a good point. It's, take, it's really not a long-term gig for most people. Yeah. Now, here's the good news. Your skills will transfer to some great customer-facing roles at great companies that don't have this complacency around them. So, no, you're not spoiled. Yes, you may be annoying because you constantly want to make things better when everyone else is kind of phoning it in, pun intended. See what I did there, Ken? Yeah, I did. I see. And you did not like it. You You picked up what I was putting down, and then you put it back down. You know, I'll laugh out loud if I think it's worthy of it. If I'm him, I'm going to go... Search for a better job with more pay with a better culture. Yeah. It's that simple. I agree. His skills will get him there. That's right. John is up next in Tampa, Florida. John, how can we help? Yes. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, I have a question, uh, kind of a uh, nearing retirement question. Um, I am 60. We're planning on retiring at 62. Um, we've done, we've been pretty blessed. I've had a career in ministry and mental health and, and, uh, so right now, um, we're debt-free, except we have a uh, mortgage on our second vacation home. We have a $200,000 mortgage. And at this point, I've got enough funds to pay that off. But at that point, I would need to then stop all my retirement savings for the next two years and uh, to build that back up. Um, I have a, a first home um, that's worth about five fifty, dollars and then the vacation home is worth about 700. My plan was when I retired to sell the one home and pay the mortgage off, but you know, with interest rates as high as they are, I'm just trying to see what's the best financial decision because I'm running into some obstacles about finding work after retirement, you know, from my current position. But they basically want to figure out, you know, what should I do about this $200,000? Do I delay it for a couple of years or do I pay it off now and let's stop the retirement so I can build up the liquid savings again. What's your income? Household? Uh, yeah. Household income. Um, okay, I make about 140 and my wife makes about the same. Wow. So you're bringing in 280. Yes. Okay. And how much do you have in a retirement? Um, in, in, I have a, I have a pension. She's going to have a pension and then we probably have about 
three in just retirement funds. Oh, you guys are doing great. Okay, if I'm in your yeah. shoes, this is a great problem to have. Here's what I'm doing. You said you want to retire at 62. That's two years from now. So why don't yes. we throw 100, 140,000 a year? That still gives you 140 grand to live off of, and we knock out this mm-hmm. mortgage with future income without touching our retirement. And still, because right now you have a great opportunity to uh, do some of the catch-up contributions for retirement. I don't want you to miss out on sure. that. Sure. So while okay. you have that earned income, I want to be funneling that into retirement and paying down the house. Yeah, and the big thing was, you know, liquid cash, because if we do 62, we have to look at, um, you know, things like benefits until 65. And, uh, you know, I, I think I need to have that liquid cash. But the only way that if I paid the mortgage off now, I'd have to stop the retirement stuff and just save up all that money. Where are you going to uh, live? Where are you going to live after you retire? Uh, we're going to live in the, the the second home down in uh, Tampa, so we're going to live there. So and there's your there. liquid cash. You do what George says. You sell your primary home right now, and there's your liquid. Yeah, we need to be we need to be in our primary for another two years before we can move into that. Okay, so as soon as you retire, we sell the primary and move to the rental. Yes, because then what you I'm could saying. invest all of that money, and you yeah. guys are going to be more than okay at that point. Okay, so just kind of. They, you know, keep the, don't use the liquid cash right now to pay that off. How much, wait, how much do you have liquid? In, uh, liquid, I have about 230. So why can't you use the liquid cash and still fund retirement? You said you'd have to pause all retirement if you use that. Well, it used to just to build that back up, I guess, you know. But, but that's what I keep I saying. I, I would just pay it off today, man. You'd have 30 grand left over. You'd still have your amazing income yeah. to then funnel into retirement. So don't pause retirement. And then a primary home to sell, and there's the liquid is what I'm getting at. Gotcha, gotcha. How much yeah, are you going to make on the primary home two years from now? Uh, um, I would say right now it's, it's about five fifty. So depending on what the market does, but it's somewhere in that range. So it could be six hundred, and it's paid for. So outside right, of fees, you'd right. walk away with a pretty penny on that. So there's the liquid, John. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you do what John, uh, George says, you pay off the the vacation home where you're going to end up living. Mm-hmm. I love you paying st- this thing off. You today. still got thirty grand, and you're not stopping retirement investment from your actual income. And then when we sell the house. We got a chunk of cash. And by the way, that retirement, the uh, vacation home, you're going to free up a payment there that you can now invest. So you got to think about that, True. too. You're so, in great yeah. shape, John. But I'm paying this thing off today. Yeah. I know it hurts to see that money go because you guys have worked so hard to get that savings account up. But man, having no debt in the world, no payments in the world, if something happens, if you can't work the next two years, you're still going to be okay because you don't owe anyone anything. Yeah. So I love the idea of you paying that thing off today. You will not regret it, my friend. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're in great shape, John. Really good situation. That's impressive. Huh? Vacation home paid for. Primary home paid for. Millions of dollars of the bank. It can happen, Ken. Yeah. And they have an amazing income. So let's not, you know, forget about that fact where they're making nice high six figures. But for the next two years, let's take advantage of that. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, what's going on there? I mean, he's he's got it all laid out, but it's like he couldn't see it. And I think it's I'm going to bring it back to is it just liquidating? Not completely, but you you take two hundred thirty thousand dollars and you you take two hundred thousand dollars out. That just feels scary to people. Yeah. Well, and there's there's also this false illusion because he's got two hundred thousand on a mortgage, right? So he owes the bank two hundred thousand dollars, correct? But when you have two hundred thousand dollars, it's hard to let go of that and see that yeah. it's really a yeah. wash. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm proud of him for seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here and going, dude, we could retire completely debt free and have so many options. They're gonna have two pensions, yeah, one point three million in the bank plus the home primary sale. Yeah, I feel good about. And this. didn't he say the uh, it's down in Tampa? Yeah, yeah, not the worst place to be. I tell you, the Camels and Coleman's are coming. We're gonna get Stacy in the car. I don't think we got we're invited, get, but we're huh? showing up. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we go out together, the four of us. That's true. We'd have a Let's good time. Let's just on, go down and see John and his have wife. Have a good time on the golf just course. Just at least one dinner. I think that's fair. We gave him good advice. Get some fresh seafood. The advice was free. That's the least he could do. Oh, we're so excited for you, John. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. 
and Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Helping you win in your money, your work, and your relationships. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, George Camel. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Danny in Houston, Texas. Danny, how can we help? Yes, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, so I have um, a, it's probably a more personal than than money um, a situation, but obviously everything's interconnected. So I, um, am having a lot of, uh, health issues that because of where we live, um, it's, uh, I have really bad allergies that lead to really bad asthma exacerbations and I'm on and off of steroids and in and out of ERs. Um, and I'm trying all the therapies Bless your heart. and, um, uh, as a, as a physician, in a special a specialty, um, I am in a unique area. Um, I absolutely love what I do. I love the people I work with. I don't want to move, um, but my husband, being a good man, wants me to be healthy. Yes, <laughs> and um, wants what's best for 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 me and my health. And what we found from what I can tolerate is um, the coast. Either one would be better. Um, and you know, of course that higher cost of living, um, a higher tax bracket and for whatever reason, um, in my field, uh, academic, uh, positions are not paying as well. And so I'm looking at for, if we were to move, taking a 50% pay cut and it's, it's really hard for me um, to look at that and be like, how can I choose myself over my family's future? Okay. Um, well, let's let's pause there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How how um, what would your household income go to combined income go from what to what? Oh, um, OK. So it would probably go from sixes, sevens to fours, fives. Okay, so if I'm hearing you right, six to seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. to four to five hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I don't want to minimize in any way the feelings you're feeling, but your family is not going to be destitute, nor is their future going to be hampered by by that kind of a drop when you're making that kind of money after the drop. Let that's assuming that that is going to be the case, and that you can't you can't increase that. But let's just as just two strangers that you called, George. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Every We're, listener out there is like. I uh, think I could make five hundred thousand dollars work, and, and we country. and we know you don't mean it that way. But most people heard that and they're like, "I think I could scrape by on four to five hundred thousand. I'd find I a know. way." And so I'm I'm and I'm not in any way criticizing you, um, because a cut is a cut. I don't care how much money you're making, and there's still maybe sacrifices to be yeah. made that will hurt. But uh, yeah. but I wanted to start there, Danny, and then I would also tell you that. If I were your husband and your husband's already stepped up in a big way, I want you to choose you. Choosing you over the income, choosing you over your role with the rest of the family, we'd rather have you than not you. Yes? Yeah, and of course those are the exact same things that are being said. I just... I'm like, there's no guarantee that I won't get out there and still have those same issues. But well, let me ask you this. A- have you been to the coast, uh, let's say mm-hmm. uh, the East Coast? Have you spent two weeks there? Yeah, when we've done different vacations. Did I it improve? When I leave, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, but I've never lived out there, so who knows what would happen during certain seasons or illnesses. And what is it that you do? That um, I, I'm a, a 
subspecialist in uh, pulmonary medicine. So you said you're in the academic side? No, it's just that you you are typically associated with an academic center. Okay. Um, to for when you're in that. Well, role. I also want to challenge you that there's yeah. there's always going to be a pay cut. I mean, I don't know that you've checked every single role in every area, and we don't mm-hmm. know what the next six months holds as you begin to do more research. But I think it's kind of like you're like uh, it's going to be less pay. It's going to be it's going to be hard. I want you to be optimistic about that. I'm going to get my health back, and as a physician, you know that health is wealth. I mean, it's everything. What are you, what are you, what's holding you back? I, I think there's, I think you kind of said it, but I think there's, I think there's one thing here that's really holding you back. Well, I, we're just, it's, we're so close. We'll have the, the house paid off. We'll be good. We'll owe nothing to nobody. Okay. Um, How much do you owe on the house? 200. Okay. And, yeah. and it's, but here's the thing. Again, I think that's another false hurdle. Um, there's a lot of sand on the East Coast. Are you aware of this? It kind of goes mm-hmm. all the way. I mean, you know, it's kind of, we got we got up north. It goes all the way down a lot of states. And mm-hmm. your specialty pays very well. And I just believe with all the states that have sand and sea air, that there have got to be some, some places where you can move uh, that the income doesn't drop that much. But even if it does... You're still making really good money. You sell the house you're in. You may be able to pay cash for something somewhere else. I I just think you're coming up with a lot of limitations, and I still think it's deeper than that. I I know I'm digging. Is it deeper than this? I think it's – I think you really like where you live, and I think this is a massive change for you that even could totally change your life because of Mm -hmm. your health. I think you're reluctant to change and pull up roots. That's what I think. I, I don't think you're wrong. We've got three small kids, and it's you know to to find you know childcare and get them restarted. And then you're talking about probably yep. private schools, depending on the areas that we're looking at. So it's another added expense, and it just changes it changes the whole thing where you well, work so do you want to be miserable, really, really comfortable. Do you want to be miserable or uncomfortable? I mean, I have been for like three years, so yeah. I've made it this far. They're oh. going to get their mom back. So let's do that for another 25, 30 years. Now's the easiest time to move when the kids are little. They're not attached. They don't care where they're yeah. at. Um, I, I think this is a, I think this is a, do I want to be miserable physically or do I want to be uncomfortable emotionally? And I think you guys got to do more research. I think you got to spend more time on this. This is a massive move and I honor what you're feeling. That's what I thought was going on. This, yeah. you know what this is? This is actually not about paying the house off. This is about the massive amount of change that this move is going to require. And that everybody understands. Yeah. I, I just a very um, regimented, everything <laughs> scheduled, everything's been is. done out, and it just feels like it's a huge wrench and change it is. everything. And, it is, yeah. Danny, because you know what? I'm, I bet you your husband's not. Am I right? He is not. I knew <laughs> he it. Is not. I knew it because yeah. I would be like, yeah, let's move. Let's go. I love change. I really do. Yeah. I think change is great. Change is exciting. But you pretty much have two types of people in the world, freaks like me. And then normal people like George. Thank you. With a slight bit of neurosis. You know, but the, point. The, the, the point is, is that now that you've identified what's going on, here, here's why I was digging. I love that you listed out new schools. Would they have to be private? Because we're, I like you creating a list. George is actually great at this. I'm going to pass this list. off to you. Where she started, give her the list that she would need to make as she begins to look at different states and different cities to begin to the point where she goes, okay, I can check this off, this off, this off. And even now I know we can make this change and it's not as painful as possible. Yeah, there's two lists for you, Danny. One is the financial side. So let's start to make a fake budget using every dollar and go, here's what our life could be in this. Look up all the cost of living things. Look at private school costs and start to actually look at facts. And you may go... Oh, we're going to be fine. We're still going to have plenty of money. And then look at housing. Say, if we looked at this kind of house, here's how quickly we could pay that off, or we could pay cash if we did this. And that will give you some peace on the financial side. On the logistics side, start to write down every single decision you're going to have to make. And it's going to be overwhelming at first, but I promise it's also going to be cathartic once you get it on paper and your husband starts to go, cool, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. You take that one. We'll divvy this up. Let's come back and do another budget meeting, another meeting to talk about the future. And that's going to give you so much peace. Right now, there's so many variables. There's so many unknowns that it's just fear. Mm-hmm. 
You got this. Yeah. We're going to walk with you. Hey, hold on the line. Let's get Danny. We've got a checklist, and the name of it escapes me right now, but we've got a great moving checklist that, That's right. that connects the things that she needs to do and look at along with our providers. Let's our give her also providers. every dollar premium as well. Every dollar premium. Let's do that. We've got realtors. We've got accountants. We've got tax specialists. All at RamseySolutions.com, and this checklist will help you walk and through And pods this. moving in storage. Our and friends pods, over there. Pods will take care of you. My goodness. We've got this, Danny. Don't worry about it at all. This is The Ramsey Show. back to the Ramsey show where we help you win in your money and your work and your relationships. If you're brand new to the show, first of all, we want to say a big welcome. Thanks for being with us. We know we've got some jargon, some language that may need to get used to. You're figuring out which baby step, what is a baby step? What does gazelle, what does all that stuff mean? We've got a great, um, little survey for you. It takes just a moment to kind of get caught up. It's called the get started, uh, button, uh, at RamseySolutions.com. Just click on get started and just walk you through a couple questions and we'll send you some free resources and kind of let you know where you are and uh, get you caught up. And it's a really great help if, for those of you that are diving in deep. So thanks again for joining us. 888 5225 Samantha is up in Columbus, Ohio. Samantha, how can we help? Hi, nice to meet you all. Nice to um, meet you. I have a question. I hope it is coherent. Um, if it's okay, I would like to just throw out um, some hard numbers for sure. where I am financially. Yep, George is um, ready. He loves this. Okay, so I'm a teacher, and... Um, I bought a car, and for some reason, I got on a tangent explaining loans to second graders. And one of my How did kids that raised go? His hand. Said, yeah, I want to know before we <laughs> go any further. Kids. Did they understand anything? One of my kids raised me and said, "Miss Weaver, you should have paid in cash." There you go. It's like what? That's incredible. You know? So I know it's not ideal. We tend to lose common sense as we get older. These kids get it. <laughs> I know they do for sure. So I have a car loan of thirteen thousand um, three hundred and seventy-two dollars. Um, student loans about twenty six thousand, and then um, saved up. I have about five thousand dollars in a high yield savings account. Okay. So I was yeah. So that's pretty much where I am. I was accepted into um, a grant program requiring me to commit five years to teaching in an underserved area. Um. So with that, I'm awarded $32,000 over the course of five years. The first $10,000 I will receive in August. So my plan stopped me in my tracks if I'm veering off. Um, yeah. So my plan was just to take that 10000 and then take out the remaining 3000 from my high yield and just pay it off in August and just be done with pay it. Pay off the car? Yes. Okay. I like that plan. Okay. Then that would leave me like back to the baby step one, just like about a thousand dollars in my savings account. Yep. Um, then I'm left with the loans. I am eligible for the public worker student loan forgiveness program. So if I make 120 payments after 10 years, it's forgiven. So I was. I don't like that plan as much. Course- you're, you're saying you'd start that from scratch. Yes. So I just was wondering what my course of action should be with tackling that debt. Are your student loans broken out into a bunch of smaller student loans? They are. Okay. I'm wondering in your debt snowball where those would fall if some of them are lower than your car loan. Let's attack those first. Okay. So I'm guessing you've got like a 5,000, a 6,000, a 10,000, all kind of in there. Yeah, they're about like four to 6000 each. Okay. So let's lay those out in the debt snowball, and uh, you can do that. We'll gift you one year of every dollar premium, and that will help you list that out, do the math for you. 
Okay. And uh, that'll get you on the path. But what's your next stipend after that? The next what? Sorry. Your next stipend. Um, I believe it's ten thousand, ten thousand, and then it goes down to try to match. Um, I guess close the gap with the salary, and then I think it goes down to six after that, and then decreases following. Okay. What's your income? Um, I will be making pre-tax thirty-six thousand dollars. Okay. I think this is the plan. I don't like the public student loan forgiveness one as much because 10 years of your life to have to serve at a, a certain place, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so I... Because I, I you might miss out on a, a pay jump to uh, skip to another school that could pay you double Yeah. down the line. Mm-hmm. Do you understand, Samantha, why we're saying this? Like this idea of I'm just going to slog through, pay these payments, and just let it air out you know, this is just, it's keeping you trapped. It's not smart. Mm-hmm. You want to get through this a lot faster and you can. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. I do, for sure. And and so that's why that's why George is saying that. And that's what's going on here. It's, it's, it's like you're just accepting this thing as opposed to motoring through it, powering through it. And that's what we want mm-hmm. you to do here. There's to, also this sunk cost fallacy where... You know, six years in, you go, I can't go to the other job. <laughs> I'm already way, into this thing. By the way, George is not emotional. He's struggling. <laughs> he's not. Yeah. He's Samantha. He's not crying on your behalf. He's, his voice is killing him. and He's dying in here. So I just. But I want to help Samantha he, so badly. He wants to help you so bad. <laughs> Tell this is like a why. sitcom. I'm cracking up. He because he looks like you. He it's looks so like itchy. you're about ready to break down. You're so passionate in helping Samantha. It's just allergies. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'm his co-host, so and I'm trying to help him, yeah. but I can't That's stop me. laughing. I got the church giggles, folks. That's what's going on. You okay, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. Because if you need me to get up and do the Heimlich right now, please do I not will do, that. do that. I go easy. <laughs> Samantha, here's the deal. Speaking of the Heimlich, I had to do that on a kid in a classroom. This what? Past year. That's frightening. You did? I did. Did it work? My first year of teaching, it did. He look, I looked up and this kid was white and he had his hands around his throat. This sweet little boy had brought in mint for oh, everybody. Wow. And he had a mint stuck in his throat. And you, and and you got kid, it. I got it out and he threw up in front of the whole class. Well, oh, a, gosh. That took a dark turn. <laughs> That's where the trauma starts right there. See what Second happens grade. when you choke for on sure. the air. And he Every- brought one for the whole class. How sweet is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never going to forget that day. All right, George. Uh, Let that, me end on a high note. Here. If we could, that would be good. Samantha, let's get, let's do the debt snowball, smallest to largest, okay. regardless of interest. And then I would uh-huh. also recommend getting a second job where you can pay off these, this, the rest of the student loans faster. Okay. Because even making thirty six, even having twenty six left, it's gonna feel like a slog. So we've got to get our income up, even if it's outside of teaching. Maybe tutoring, mm-hmm. summer jobs, some evenings working retail or delivery gigs, anything to get rid of this debt. But I would not do the forgiveness program. Not because I'm mad about it. If you're like a year mm-hmm. away, I'd be like, all right, let's just stick this out. You're here anyways. But ten years of yeah, your life sure. is too long yeah. to devote to this thing for the golden handcuffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, George, when I heard she when when I heard her say this, I've got to go do the research because when Biden announced that, I thought that that was the forgiveness was for people who've already done that. I'm not saying she's wrong, but I'm going to dive into that. I'm not sure that that program is for people that are in it now and they just get to you just, well, give us 120 payments. And after that, we're going to let you out. That's what I heard her say. Did, did I hear that correctly? Yeah, that's the, the PSLF program. It's been around a long time. It's oh, okay. had, this isn't the Biden thing. No, this no, is no. The, this okay. is different. This one's been legit, but it's had miserable success. Okay, that's what I'm confused Incrementally about. getting better, but still, it was okay. like at a half percent success rate to apply and get through. That's what I thought. Now it's a, okay. you know, a 3% success rate. So Therein lies my confusion. Okay, I'm glad I got that cleared I up. just didn't want to rely on that. And then a no. lot of people, they have to stick to certain areas, certain jobs, certain yeah. schools in order to get it, yeah. which again limits their career. Potential. And that's what we've been talking about. That if she plays that out, as a, it, it's just gonna, it, it keeps you tied down. Uh, and, and you well, just even this grant, she said, "Hey, I've got to I know. work in this underserved area, which means you have lower income. That's right. Which is great if you're passionate about working at the underserved sure. area. Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But don't do it just because I'm going to get yeah. this grant or this yeah. forgiveness. Yeah, it's generally not worth it. That's exactly right. And I think this is the key. Here's the here's the message. And again, I'm not anti grant. But when you take money and it has a bunch of conditions, you've got to weigh the conditions versus the choices you will be able to make. 
And there's a big difference. And, and I'll tell you this, it, you know, I don't think people realize this, George, until they make a decision like this and they realize, oh, I sacrificed some freedom for this opportunity, whereas I can have opportunity that doesn't require me to sacrifice some freedom. Now, sacrifice time, sacrifice money that you pay yourself, great, but no conditions. And I think that's what we want people to be careful of. Grants, and again, grants are nice. Loans, they all come with conditions. Strings and just, attached. Yeah, fine it's, print. Yeah, it's tough stuff. Read the fine print. Good stuff. All right, good hour, George Camel. Hey, thank you. Appreciate the guys behind the booth keeping us going. Austin, our fearless leader today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, America, for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in, 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by George Camel. Playing a little hurt today. Uh, he's brave. I'm proud of him. He's got more throat coat in him than the actual bottle itself has. He's he's sprayed enough throat That's coat in his mouth the last hour that I'm not sure you're going to taste anything for a month. But uh, he's here. He's he's ready to go to take your money questions. I'll help out as well, and I'm here to handle any uh, work related questions um, because it affects your money. We want you to make more money. We also want you to experience more meaning. We want you to be happy and fulfilled. Uh, the largest net worth millionaire study ever done was done by Ramsey Solutions. 96% of the net worth millionaires loved their work, and that's why I do the uh, work stuff here at Ramsey Solutions. So we're here for you. You ready to go, pal? Ready. He's hydrated. Let's go to Jordan go. in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the Steelers. Jordan, what's going on? Hey, thank you guys for taking the call here this afternoon. You bet. What's up? Um, hey, I was just I was reaching out to you guys. Um, so I'm just kind of learning about Dave Ramsey here, and uh, my my fiance and I are getting married in June of 2024, and I'm about a hundred thousand dollars in debt, um, uh, car loans, credit cards, and IRS. Um, and I'm just you know I like to be able to cash flow the wedding, and I'm just kind of determining you know which direction I should go. At like where should my focus be at this point? Whether I should just continue to save money for the the wedding, or you know continue to um, you know uh, just pile in money towards my debt. So, All right. So let's um, uh, uh, let's get some numbers here. Okay. So what's your income? Uh, my average is about two hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Great. And uh, how much is the wedding price tag? Um, I'm budgeting forty thousand. And is is the wife, the wife's family, the wife to be, her family paying anything? Is it all you? Uh, so her, um, the my fiance is going to be her family is going to be paying about twenty grand. Does that leave you with twenty? Uh, that's correct. So, and so my your your portion is forty thousand. I'm for sorry. The honeymoon and okay. Oh, so so what's your what's your what do you have to come up with after they put twenty in? Uh, my again, my budget is about forty thousand altogether, including the honeymoon, the the additional rings, and and the wedding. Okay, so you put in twenty, and her family's putting in twenty. Correct. How much do you have saved? I have about twenty five grand now. All in everything in in all of your savings, you have twenty five grand. Correct. Okay. What's the debt? How much debt again? A hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. I have uh, forty thousand to the IRS, um, and then there's about twelve thousand on credit card, and about a forty-five thousand dollar car loan. How much is the car worth? Uh, I just bought, I just bought it here within the last two months. It's probably worth about fifty grand. 
I'd sell the car today. Right, right out of the gate. Okay. Jordan, yeah. I know that hurts, but think about this, man. You could be completely debt-free with a paid-for wedding with an emergency fund 11 months from now. That's where I would want you to be. So you're asking us, which one should I do? Which should be the priority? I think yes to everything. You have the money for the okay. wedding set aside. Let's now focus on debt payoff or use part of that 25 grand, put 24 towards your debts because you got to get the IRS off your back. That goes to the very top of your debt snowball. Yes. That goes first. Okay. And if you get rid of this car and you're making 200 grand, dude, you're going to breeze through this debt payoff, this debt snowball, and then still have time to save up for the wedding. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to come back to the car because I heard the doubt in your voice. Okay. I understand. I'm going to come back to it. Jordan, what's this car? What'd you buy? Uh, it's a Toyota 4Runner. Oh, you like that 4Runner, don't That's you? That's a sick whip. Arr, 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 arr. You yeah. like it. It's a great car. I don't know what sick I've whip means. That's yeah. what yeah. kids say. Is that what the kids say? Yeah. Uh, I'm middle-aged, George. Uh, but here's the deal. You can get a $5,000 car, and it'll get you going for just, this maybe is a six-month situation, maybe a year. Your fiance, she's already said yes. You got a ring on You got no one to impress anymore, she dude. She doesn't care. That's true. I know. <laughs> I'd sell the car. That just listen. What's your car payment right now? I'm about ready to throw up. I'm sure. What's the car payment on this? Uh, yeah, you probably will be ready to throw up. My the car payment right now is seven hundred and fifty three dollars. I was gonna guess seven fifty. Oh, ding, I ding, just ding. I just threw up on my mouth. I have to swallow it. Okay, there it is. That's disgusting. Seven hundred. Oh my gosh, dude. What do you do with that car? What do you do with the seven hundred a month? Seven hundred fifty a month. As soon as you pay the you sell the car, what do you do with it? You work that uh, on the snowball. To, you start paying absolutely. stuff off. That's a huge chunk of change, my friend. Over the next 11 months, that's $8,300 that could be back in your life. And yes, you're going to have to go get a cheap car, but you sell for 50, you, it's, you owe 45, you have savings in the bank. Let's put some of that together. Maybe it's a 10 grand yeah, car. Yeah, there you go. That's a 15 bad. grand car. Yeah. Even. Doing that with cash will still put you in a far better position. By the way, Jordan, okay. as we're playing this out, I'm trying to sell you on this big time, okay? You can flip that car. You get that $10,000 car, an $8,000 car, you can flip that six, eight months from now and probably get most of that back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're the not depreciation gonna, has already happened. The on depreciation that on that has happened, and and you're you're not driving it a ton. You know what I'm saying? So I just want you to see right. what we're trying to do is, is free up cash for you. The IRS, owing the IRS $40,000 would make me have highs. I wouldn't be sleeping at night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I, from 2019 through 2022. Um, I don't care. Even rent free I in don't your care. Head. I don't care when it's from. Craig, I just haven't bit the bullet and didn't really want to pay Uncle Sam. Yeah, well, you know what happens when you don't pay Uncle Sam? You go to jail. Like this isn't like yeah, a, they're going to come after this you. This is like your wages, I don't ruin your life. Pay Uncle Sam. Well, how do you look in an orange jumpsuit? Because that's what you're looking at, and that's not really going to happen to you. But the point is, why are we even having an emotion about it? I hate taxes more than anybody I know, but I also hate the idea of jail. <laughs> he makes a good Certainly. point. You know what I mean? So hey, you're there. So you've got the cash for the wedding, and you got five thousand extra. You sell the car. That knocks out half your debt right there, just Boom. selling the car. Done. Are you the IRS okay. will get paid a few months later, yep. leaving you with just the credit cards. You'll still have time to save up for the wedding. And, dude, you choose. You want a forerunner or a fiancé? Because at this point, you gotta, your priorities have like to be straight that. here. And she would rather see a guy who's debt-free starting off their marriage on a, on a great foot rather than a guy who looks cool in his forerunner. Yeah. Absolutely. And you'll get that forerunner back. I'm not you're gonna be back there. Probably two years from now, you're gonna be driving an even nicer forerunner, but you're gonna be paying cash for it. Yeah. Tell you what, George, I'd want the old beat up forerunner that I paid eight thousand for when I'm running from the IRS. The problem is those I wrecked that car. Forerunners hold their horrible. value, man. Even an old you know forerunner. What? They really do. It's insane. You can't even get a forerunner for eight thousand. It must it have four hundred thousand miles on it. It's unbelievable. They're tanks. Those, what do you call those? The Forerunner. What's the make on that? Oh, Toyota? There it is. Toyota. Toyota, As the kids folks. say. <laughs> I love when he says that, folks. I'm easily entertained. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. My new nickname for you is uh, Gargle McSnuffins. That's a new one. I've yeah. been called a lot of things, yeah. and that's not the worst. I just made it up. He's in here gargling. The guy's playing hurt today. George, is a, he's a real stud. He's, uh, he's playing hurt. He's got the uh, throat issues, and he's gargling in between the breaks. I just woke up today. I said, what would Ken Coleman do? Mm. He's a true professional. He well, powers through. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, the warm salt water gargling, which you're doing. Uh, the the uh, hot tea with the honey. That's a big and one. And no talking. Ken is now my PCP. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you, right. Ken. Unfortunately, you've been talking all morning. So I want to I get your take on this. I'll set you up. Uh, I've got an article in my hands. This is a uh, CNBC article. And uh, this is written uh, in, in kind of the first person of... Uh, uh, a reporter, and uh, I'm just going to skip all over that and get to the reality here. Uh, over half of Americans earning more than $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. This is according to a recent report by Payments and Lending Club. Um, earning more than $100,000 a year would put you well ahead of the median American household, which brings in $74,780. So assuming you're an individual with dependents, that salary would qualify you as upper class through three different definitions. Um, But if we skip the whole upper class, middle class, all that, we're talking about people making over $100,000 a year that are living paycheck to paycheck. According to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you'd have to earn about $129,000 today to have the same purchasing power that a salary of $100,000 had just a decade ago. So... How far your dollar goes depends on cost of living. And, George, we say things like cost of living, but then that just assumes it's like, well, this is just what it is. No, you determine your cost of your living. Just because you live in one region of the country or the other doesn't mean that you have no responsibility or no say in your cost of living. And you were just telling me something, oh, gosh. Uh, which I want to cite because I think this is a great example. And you said that you were in a little, which I don't know why you do this, but that's not I the know. point. I, you were in a little uh, little tiff, if you will, with uh, someone on social media today, and the guy was giving you the business about how in the world can you say that you can live in a New York City on $100,000? And your reply was? Yeah, here I always think of this Mark Twain quote, never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down and beat you with experience. And that is what I do every time I go into the comments section. I know. And uh, I know. so this I guy, he, I, we posted a clip from my YouTube channel, and it was about how people make $100,000 feel broke, and it's because of debt, and it's because of their lifestyle. And he chirps in going, this guy doesn't understand that there's areas of the country where you can't live on $100,000. And I went, bro, if I didn't have any debt, I could show anyone how to live on hundred grand in New York City. I promise you that. And I did, here's what grinds my gears, Ken. In this article, it says, thanks to a combination of federal, state, and local taxes, along with sky-high cost of living, a $100,000 salary in New York City is worth more like $35,000, Smart Asset found. I'll show you, Smart Asset. Here's the deal. You can't include cost of living and just take that out of someone's check. Um, so when it comes down to it, let's say your effective tax rate, effective tax rate, not marginal, what you actually ended up paying, even in New York City, was, you know, 25, 30%, even 35%. That still leaves you with about six grand take home pay. Mm-hmm. Now, New York City rent, of course, it's going to be really high. Now, if you're a single young person, 
Live with roommates. I live with roommates all the way up until I was married. I know it's not fun. I know you'd rather have a beautiful penthouse in New York City on your own. And if you want to own a home, you may not be able to afford a wonderful single-family home in the best neighborhood right right now. You might have to get a condo that's 20 minutes further out. But people don't want to make these sacrifices, Ken. And uh, they love to complain about inflation and cost of living. And yes, those are astronomically high. But I truly think the answer is debt lifestyle and lifestyle creep there's no the question more you about make it. the more you spend we That's all right. think we can't live without debt well you got to have a car payment right and these student loans i mean you can't get rid of these things well and let's say you know what let me just throw something out there i'm not going to go te- too deep down this 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 road but this article mentions tennessee where we live i love the state of tennessee one of the many reasons i love the state of tennessee is because they don't tax us on our income no state income tax And I just got to point this out. People griping and complaining about the cost of living in New York. And they basically say, because Tennessee doesn't tax earned income, a a Memphis resident is what they pick, the the city of Memphis, earning $100,000, takes home $74,000 after federal state taxes. And uh, because the city's cost of living is 14% below the national average, blah, 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 blah. This feels like it's all this stuff to go. Guess what? You can move. You can move. And if you and if you move here, can I just say this? You should maybe vote like we vote because that's why we don't have a state income tax. Don't go voting to have an income tax. And I'm not, I'm not, listen, I know people get nervous. I'm not going to get political on one side of the aisle or other. I'm just going to tell you the facts are the facts. You can move or you can change the way you vote. But if you're going to gripe about taxes, there's a pretty clear choice most of the time. So I just get so irritated with all this cost of living and taxes this and taxes that. Well, guess what? You have a say in it. Move. And if you move, vote differently. And then and then spend differently. There's your three points, George. You can't just make it all about the money. You also got to decide, where do I want to live? Why do I want to live there? What does that mean and to me? And if you want to live there, go make some more money. That's the whole point. But no, they want you to, to give them more money. And so that doesn't work ju- that We way. should just feel entitled to live in New York City for fun, regardless of our income. That's right. an insane take. Sure. I'll call Stacy on the way home today. Hey, babe, we're going to the Upper East Side of Manhattan because I want to. And and now everything's just going to happen. And, and forget the numbers. We just, we're going to gripe about it the entire time. Or, you know, you just can't manifest this stuff. It's, it's, it's mind boggling. I know I'm getting grumpy, but it's just mind boggling to me. I love Grumpy Kent. It's my you, favorite. You're getting, getting choked emotional up again. again. <laughs> Folks, if you're just joining us, George is not emotional today. His voice is coming and going. He doesn't know when it's coming. He doesn't know when it's going. But when you talk is. for a living, it's just exhausting. It's they don't fun. tell you that much, it's but fun. we have a good time. So here's the deal. What we have to understand is when we started this article, we laid out some data that we have more $100,000 in over earners than ever that are living paycheck to paycheck. And the reality is, is that the more that we make, the more we are tempted to spend. This is the human condition. And so it comes back to something that Dave Ramsey has said for decades. It's not about math. It's about the behavior. It's the person in the mirror. And, and, and when we can get to a point where we go, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to wait a little bit. Sacrificing, waiting ends up winning. But when we don't sacrifice, when we don't wait and we say, give me now, I want this now, we make decisions. And before we know it, we have literally painted ourselves into a financial corner where then the only option is massive sacrifice and massive misery. You've heard the calls on the show. Well, people go, we got to sell everything. We have to move because we're broke. Yeah. And then what is our prescription to them? You know, we say, you're not going to see the inside of a restaurant for two years unless you work there. That's not fun. But the more we make decisions based on what we want now versus what we want long term, the more we get ourselves into trouble. And that's what's going on. It is unconscionable to me that a $100,000 earner is living paycheck to paycheck because in America, you can make changes. You can change where you live. You can change where you work. You can change how you spend. This idea that I've got to have more money and I'm griping and complaining and going, inflation, it's so high and it used to be this and I shouldn't get adjusted my income based on inflation. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your job. No company can pay you commensurate to inflation. It is impossible. They will go out of business, you dolt. 
So asking for something like that is mind-numbingly stupid. Yeah. It all comes down to delayed gratification. And here's the thing. We can always look back and go, man, in the 1950s, $100,000, that would turn into $20,000. We no. can't keep looking at the past. Well, you'd have been broke in the 1950s, too. Yep. That's the problem. you got to look at reality and go, what can we do next, knowing what we know? What can we control? We can control where we live, how much we work, what our income is. That's in our control. All right, folks, more throat spray for George and more of your calls right around the corner. This is The Ramsey Show. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, George Camel. We are here to take your questions about your money, your work, and your relationships. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888 We go to Kansas City next, where Alexander joins us. How can we help? Hello there. How are you guys doing today? We're having a blast. What's going on? Hey, so um, me and my wife were talking right before the show started and figured we'd give you guys a call. Um, so uh, I've been working with the company for the last seven years, and at the end of last month, I was laid off. I'm the, the sole income earner for our family. And so right now, we're basically living our savings, and I did get a little bit of a severance, which is nice, although I was one week from my sabbatical, so I was <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, sad to lose that. So sorry about um, that. Uh, it's all good. We, certain things happen in God's timing. How long um, is your severance but, going to carry you, or how long could it carry you? Um, so the severance was for 12 weeks. Um, with our savings right now, we have about, I think I did the math, $27,000 in savings. So it should be able to get us through about a year. Um, however, we do have a baby on the way in October. Um, so got to pay off the rest of the medical bills and prepare for our midwife and things like that. So I include that in the cost as well. Okay. And the 27,000, um, tell me about that. What's the, is that your yeah. emergency fund? Yeah. So that was the emergency fund. We've been working on saving that up. I learned about you guys, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. And so uh, we tried doing that. And when me and my wife got married, we uh, sold my other cars that I had to pay off our debt. And so up to last year, we were debt free. Okay. Um, however, however, our basement uh, started to bow in about five inches. So oh, uh, we, had to we had to take a, a loan on that um, because we hadn't saved up uh, preparing for something like that. How so, much is that? Is that the only debt you have? That's the only debt we have. Um, that that debt is about fifteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. And how and much so does we, the twenty seven thousand represent? Six months, four months, five months? Uh, so if we could, if we truly cut down everything, we can make that last probably uh, anywhere from a year to eighteen months. Oh, good grief! Okay. Well, that's okay. And we what's your plan for income? Uh, so right now, working a bunch of different jobs. Uh, I actually have a couple of interviews coming up. Um, I listening to some of the commercials. I was actually possibly going to apply to the Ramsey office. So <laughs> uh, we'll see that. But essentially, just applying everywhere I can, trying to get as many interviews as possible, and try to find something here in the near future. Okay. And you're working while you're doing that in odd jobs or side hustles. I uh, haven't currently. Uh, I was looking at things like Uber and th uh, other kind of uh, 
jobs like that. However, our cars are too old to qualify for those. Yeah. Um, but uh, right now, well, what's your? Uh, I'm sorry. So time. I've asked you a bunch of questions. What is your question? Yeah. So yeah, no worries. Uh, so the question we had was: we have the twenty seven thousand in savings right now, and we have the fourteen thousand dollars in debt. Should we wait until I get a job um, to then use the money and pay that debt off? Or should I go ahead and do that now uh, and just basically use that as a fire to get a job faster? Yes. You should pay off the debt today. Get the 14000 out of your life. What is that going to represent in payments? What are you paying on that 14000 right now? Uh, so that payment is two seventy right so now. So we just found $270 in our budget per month. That's a good thing. You're debt free and and you still have a decent emergency fund. So what you're doing is you're just kind of going backwards here and you're going to go pay it off. And now we're back and you've got the six month emergency fund based on the numbers you told me. If yeah, 20, you said you could live on that for a on year. On the 27. So, so go ahead and yeah. pay it off. All right. Now you live off the severance. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't even live off the severance. If I could, if it were me right now, because I had the severance, I'd put that severance back into replenishing that emergency fund, and I would be doing side gigs, side hustles, anything I can to just pay the four walls and try to tighten everything up until I get another full-time job. That's what I would do. George, do you agree or disagree? No, I'm with that. You know, in the baby steps, we say you can, uh, there's called store can store mode. And you guys are in both right now. You have a layoff and a baby on the way. So I want you to stack up as much money as possible until mom and baby are back home safe. You've got income back. But to Ken's point, you guys aren't going to be totally broke even paying off this debt. You're still going to have a nice cushion. Sounds like you guys can live on very little. And like Ken said, I wouldn't wait to go find that next big job. I'd be doing a bunch of stuff right now in the meantime to create any income. Yeah. I mean, listen, listen, two and three jobs, Alexander, at least two to try to make up what you were making. What was your income before? I was about 80000 Yeah. So, look, if you can, you may not make the same in a couple of jobs, where, but I would be bringing it in and then maybe a little bit of the severance, right, that makes up the difference and we stay on budget. And then the extra severance goes back into savings. And let's just be conservative in this season because you're going to get hired. We're still in a very good job market in this country. What were you doing for your work? Yeah, so for five years, I was in the learning development phase uh, with a healthcare IT company. And then for the last two years, I was doing change management. In healthcare IT? Yes. Okay. So yeah. you could, could you work in either of those fields right now? Uh, theoretically, yes. Um, there was a non-compete agreement uh, that goes into effect for a year, so there is some potential restriction there. How but do they not general, cut up a non-compete when you get laid off? Uh, you know, that, that question is great. I'm not even sure it would hold up. <laughs> well, did you get the answer to that yourself? Uh, so they, whenever they had us fill out the uh, agreement to like not sue here and get your severance, one of the things was that basically that not compete is still in effect. Hmm. So if you went and applied for a job, it couldn't even be in those fields, or it can't be that role. What are the stipulations of that? Yeah. So the, stip- the main stipulation is I cannot provide the same service to the clients of that company. Oh, oh, okay. that's well, very different. Yeah, you can't different. poach clients. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, okay. This right. doesn't limit you. So uh, you see where we're at now, Alexander. We want you moving forward. We want you being conservative, not eating into that emergency fund. Other than you are going to pay off the fourteen thousand dollars worth of debt, and the good news is you got three months severance. You can work, and you're going to be fine. You got it. Got it. All right, my man. I appreciate the call. Wow. Yeah, I like this. Worst case, if he does these side gigs, let that be enough to cover their bills to where he's not dipping into that emergency fund. That's what we, yeah. We don't want people to use the emergency get fund for a living. Now, we've got an article we're going we're gonna to make sure in today's show we'll link to on what to do when you're laid off that I wrote that it has a lot of different practical, tactical things. But here's what we want people to hear. The emergency fund, George, are for very – it's not just a list, a specific, but it's more of a specific emergency. My HVAC goes out. We don't want to live off the emergency fund. Now, while losing a job feels like an emergency, we don't want to live off of that. Well, we can go get more income. And so while yes, if you we have can. to dip into it, for some reason, if you're unable to work, there was an injury or something, yes, then use it. That. But a very Alexander's extreme. very capable. No, he's fine. So we want to protect that emergency fund with everything we got everything we got for those actual emergencies. And to this day, I don't know how you are. 
I try to cash flow every emergency that oh, I yeah. can. It I hurts get to so use it. irritated about it. Well, once you have a good financial foundation, you can generally adjust your budget and go, eh, we can skip that this month. We can actually re- rearrange the budget in order yeah. to cash flow this. And man, it it's amazing how little you use your emergency fund once you have one. Yeah. Yeah. And you tend to have better luck, right? When you're broke, you tend to have more bad luck. When you have an emergency fund, you tend to have more good luck yeah. because you're able to actually yeah. take care of your stuff. Yeah. And let's not forget, in this situation with Alexander, he pays that debt off today, $270 a month, right back to the budget. So That's nice. That's nice. And that goes somewhere. Without the stress and anxiety of we have this debt hanging over our head that's exactly with a baby right. on the way that's exactly while we don't have a job. Whew, it's yeah. amazing how life storms just, right. it all kind of hits at once. Yeah. And I, I will tell you, um, you know, I come from a, a, a lower middle class home. My dad was a pastor and he was a church planner and twice he planted churches. The second one when I was about 12, 13, and there just wasn't much money coming in. I mean, that's all support. And when you're getting going and he went and worked construction, man, was making really good money an hour as just doing labor work in a, on a construction crew. It was hot. It was hard. That's not what he was. But it, it made really good money and it took care of our bills so that There wasn't the stress of actually focusing on planting the church, taking care of the family. And that's the idea. Go do whatever you got to do. Go work and make up the difference until you get stable. It's a huge, huge relief. Thanks for the call, Alexander. Don't move. More of your calls coming up next. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by George Camel. We're here for you this hour, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go now to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. Jody is there. Jody, how can we help? Hi there. Um, I'm so glad I got you guys today. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so we're, we're, the reason we decided to call in, my husband and I, um, is we're a big fan of the Ramsey Method. Uh, three years ago, he paid off over $230,000 of student loan debt Wow! over about three years. Good for um, you. They were the worst three years of our lives, but uh, <laughs> they, they were worth it. So, you know, um, we know that, that you guys know what we should do. Uh, we're caught up. We're both freelancers. We're both in the film and television industry. We're not writers, but... We're very much caught up in the writer's strike. Oh, um, no. So we're, not, we're not able to find anything that's kind of relevant. And even, you know, the few things that we do find, everybody else is looking for work in the same things. Everybody else is scratching around. Oh. And so you know, we're having a hard time where, sure. this is what I wanted to get your advice about, is, you know, when we're applying for jobs, uh, just to, you know, keep moving forward and not have to, you know, to protect our emergency fund, like you guys were just talking about, um, we're finding that people don't want to hire us knowing that we're going to leave in a couple of months. Um, anything that seems like it would utilize our skill set or, our, you know, just our education or just like, well, you guys are going to go back to your real life in a couple of months or, you know, five months or six months, however long it lasts. And, you know, clearly we're not afraid of hard work. Um, and, you know, I've been taking a, a cleaning job, you know, for the past couple of weeks just to, you know, have something to, to do during the day that, feels like it's bringing money in, but it really brings in so little money. And, you know, it just feels like it's, yeah. it's something that you do and there's not anything else you can do. What do you guys um, need to make? I mean, we have four months emergency fund ready for this. We kind of knew that this was coming. So nothing is dire. Um, but, you know, our operational budget really is at about, if we don't save towards our house that we're renting right now, if we don't do anything. We yeah, need I'm like talking bare months. bones. This just gets you bare through. Bones, yeah. Bare bones, $4,700. We just had a budget meeting. Okay, great. <laughs> I love that you've got a bare bones. And uh, so what do you guys do? What, is, what, is, what do you do? What do your husband, what does he do? 
We're both film and TV um, editors, okay. so uh, it feels like you know we have like one of the most popular skills in the world for this current world, <laughs> but we just somehow still are having a hard time finding something that utilizes and, that. Yeah, and forgive me for the silly question. I th- does that mean that you guys are actually editing footage? Yes, yeah. So what we do is we, we've been on some shows. Um, Actually, the, your producer is like, oh, do you want to sell me some of your credits? And they'll tell me. And I was like, uh, maybe not. Maybe my friends might get worried about me if they're listening. So, right. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. We but, don't have to do that. But we've worked for HBO. We've worked for AMC. We've worked on some on some shows that you would definitely okay, recognize. Okay, great. So the first thing that comes to mind is is less L.A. and more freelance. Um, we, we, mm-hmm. we I have a good friend who... Um, is 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 a pretty he's a pretty substantive producer. Works out of his house in my neighborhood in Franklin, Tennessee, and mm-hmm. uh, freelance work outside of the movie and television industry is where I would be looking. And what I mean by that is, you've got you've got people doing videos all the time, social media. You've got companies that need. I would be looking. I'd be scouring online for some freelance video editing because you guys bring to the table all the skills necessary to actually just do the video. And this is not stuff that's in L.A., so you're not scrambling and fighting for it. Uh, it's remote. I'd be looking there, a gig work like that, where you're doing any kind of video editing, I'd be looking for that uh, remote. That's where I would start. Um, as it relates to the issue of, well, people don't want to hire us, I think you're going to have to do some of that, like, you know, work I was talking about. Like, I'm not saying your husband's got to go do construction, but you're looking for a type of manual labor that pays really well per hour. If he's working in a warehouse and he's making 18 to 20 bucks an hour slupping boxes, again, this is not a step backwards. This is just, this is good old-fashioned character. We, we don't want to touch our emergency fund. And, and I'd be looking for gig work like that where they don't care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's that you kind of hustle. For stuff and Spartan, for the interruption, they were, they were kind of asking, like, what well, can you commit for a year? You know, and we were like, no, we can't, you know, even for dog walking stuff. Like, they just don't want to do. They want a year like, commitment? Onboarding. They wanted, uh, we've had two different jobs that we've applied for that wanted a one year commitment for taking people's Bichon freezes outside the pee. I mean, I don't understand. That's crazy. You know, so and maybe that's our market in particular because we do have a lot of people who, I mean, even in the best of times, are actors and people who want to have side hustles. Maybe they're they're all burnt out. Um, but I really do like the idea of just trying to find something that is purely remote, purely online. I, I know that people in town aren't. Thinking could you that get way. connected with like a wedding videographer, and then they could offload the editing to you? That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, wedding videographers I've talked to the way that they make ends meet is by doing everything themselves. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's but, right. But yeah. you know, th- there could be someone who's doing gangbusters. But you know that. That that takes some hunting for yeah. sure. I mean, which I mean we're that's to do. that's my best idea. I again, I I don't think that every warehouse job. I don't think that every I don't think that every job needs a one year commitment. You know, and mm-hmm. and here's the reality: if if it gets to that point, work is work. And if they're ready to hire me and they're going, can you commit for a year? You go, I don't know, I don't know. I'm in between things right now. I don't know if I can commit yeah. or not, but I'm ready to work right now. And if that doesn't work, fine. But what we've got to do is, is we've got to get to the point where that doesn't matter. They're looking for somebody, and we're going to pay you X amount an hour. If you're going to stock grocery shelves, whatever you got to do, what we're trying to do is, is one way or another for the next two, three, four months, I don't think the strike is going to stretch six months. I don't, I don't think that. Do you? I hope not. I don't think so. I don't so. believe it I will. Think, I It'll think bring it's Labor the whole, Day. I, yeah. I'm hoping so. That's yeah. what I think. I think you guys got to figure out 30 days. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I would I would just be doing whatever. And I love the online model. You can't believe. Somebody with y'all's background, you could be maybe teaching some classes online. And you guys are out there. You're not out there schlupping. You know, you're, you're in your home. You're doing stuff that you're really good at. How do you transfer the skill and experience you have to some online jobs out there where people need talent? And it's just mm-hmm. plug and play. That's where I would be starting. And again, I would be looking for anything manual labor that they know it's transient. They just need somebody to come in. That's where I would be looking. Yeah. I do love Ken's idea of social media. That's such a huge one. Is These businesses or entrepreneurs or creators, they're not great at editing. And you guys are experts at that. If I could hire someone like you, are you kidding me? At a fraction of your actual rate, I'd be chomping mm-hmm. at the bit. And so I would be contacting creators out there on Instagram and videos you see that you say, hey, 
here's where we're at. We're in the writer's strike. We're looking for work right now. We're willing to cut you a really good deal to cut you some really great social media work that can help you increase your impact. What do you think? And I think just getting real creative and persistent, you guys will get some amazing gigs and that word of mouth will spread and hopefully you'll be back yeah. to work in no time. And one other idea, Jody, this is at least worth kicking around. But, you know, I'm thinking, you think about the East Coast. If there's some production companies in Nashville, Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm just picking cities, and they're looking for some part-time editing, I would be jumping on that. They'd hire you in a second. Do you know what I'm thinking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, right. No, we definitely have the credits. We have the resume. I mean, it feels crazy sending an editing resume with, you know, movies and TV to a waitressing job. They just look at you and go, what is this? So They've got to understand. They know how strikes work. I don't think anyone looks down at that and goes, what are you guys doing here? They go, wow, I really respect that you're looking to make ends meet and do whatever it takes. I'd be shocked, Jody, if there aren't several freelance editing, video editing jobs that are posted from all across the country. That would be a good short-term fix for you guys. That's what I think. So that's really good. That's a really good place to start. I really appreciate you guys. I, I hope that. there's something there. I just got to believe there are because they don't want full time. They can't, but they need somebody on a short term level. And you guys could come in and make quick work of that. And as good as you guys are, you might be able to pick up three, four, five, six jobs over a 30, 45 day period. And it's just gravy and it gets you through. That's yeah, what that's yeah. what I would try. So thanks for trusting us and call. I'm sorry you're dealing with this. Um, here's what I know, Jody. I just think it's going to get done a lot sooner than you think because the industry was already hurting coming out of COVID. It started warming back up, and now this nonsense. Yeah. So I think they're going to fix it pretty quick. Uh, it just can't keep going. Our it hearts go out to all of you affected so by that sorry. writer strike. So many people, not just the writers. It's so many Everyone people Everyone involved in, in making great but film and TV. Here's a great example as to why the emergency fund, why getting out of debt matters. It allows you to weather storms like this. Beautiful work. George Camel, thanks, my friend, Thank for you. hanging out. Thanks, Austin and the crew. Thank you, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, George Camel here. If you love the show and you want a deeper dive on your money journey, we've got a weekly newsletter that gives you helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for the newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in, 888-825-5225. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell is my colleague and co-host, and he is with me this hour as we take your calls. Brendan is up first in New York City, New York. Brendan, how can we help? Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you? Doing well. How are you, sir? I'm good. So I'm recently married, and my in-laws, who are two of the best people I've ever met in my entire life, maybe besides my wife, have a financial advisor they really like and they've been very successful with. Now, we had a conversation with that financial advisor, and it was very basic, but of course, being newlyweds, we have a timeline to buy a house. He recommended maxing out our 401ks to use that as a some sort of tax advantage way to pull out that money to eventually use that as a down payment for a house. Now, I know Dave Ramsey doesn't like when we touch our 401ks for anything besides maybe absolute emergencies. So in your opinion, is that something you would advise to do or something we should steer clear of in all case? I would run far, far away. Mm-hmm. And bless your in-laws, but I am not using their financial advisor for advice anymore. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought, too. And of course, I mean, the financial advisor is incentivized for you to invest with them. So there's already kind of like a, I wouldn't take my down payment advice from from this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, Brendan, do you understand why George is saying run from this? Why <laughs> this is a bad idea? Uh, I mean, I understand our 401ks can be some of the most lucrative way we can build wealth in the long term, how it's a good route to becoming, you know, as Dave Ramsey says, a millionaire, 
understand the implications of if we don't repay that 401k loan in a certain time period, yes. the horrible, horrible that's what that's the part we we agree that it's a great way to invest for the future we don't like using it as a loan it has all kinds of negative implications and it puts unnecessary pressure on you why Mm -hmm. that route versus another route uh it's just what he recommended you know he said there was a good tax advantage way of doing that no but at least from my understanding unplugging the growth of that money while paying yourself back with interest into the loan while putting yourself at risk is just unwise and so if that's how desperate you are to get into a house we need to pause and go what is causing all this why can't we wait another six months to a year to just save up from our future income do you guys have any debt we have no debt and you have a fully funded emergency fund? Fully funded. Great. So what is the down payment goal and how far are we from it? We need about maybe two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. My wife and I are both young, uh, twenty two and twenty four. We make a combined two hundred thousand dollars a little bit over every single year. Okay. And do you have anything say for the down payment yet? Uh, maybe about a hundred thousand. Great. So that let's just look at the facts here. You're hundred fifty away. How quickly can you save up another hundred fifty grand with no debt, making two hundred plus? Um, maybe another two years. Maybe I was going to say eighteen months max. Yeah. Okay. You can live off a hundred and put a hundred away, and do that for a year and a half, and you'll get to your goal. And you're twenty two and twenty four. That's impressive. You guys are doing so well Very to be well. where you are in a high cost of living area. When everyone says you have to go into debt, and you guys are doing this the right way. You'll be a year and a half older with 250000 down, putting you in a mm-hmm. great financial position. And so I would just pause and go, all right, we're 18 months away. Let's not do stupid with zeros on the end by doing this 401k loan tax advantage scheme this financial advisor told us about. Okay. Makes yep. sense. There you go, my friend. Thank you for the call. Let's uh, go to Jake now in Newark, New Jersey. Jake, how can we help? Hey, thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. So... I guess a little bit about my story. So I've been with a girl for about a year and I'm planning on getting engaged uh, in the near future. And we've had a conversation about combining finances when we're together. Uh, Currently I'm 25. I make about three times what she makes and she has about 22,000 outstanding student loan debt. And I guess my question is, uh, I guess it's it's just uncomfortable because I'm not sure, like, should I be feeling guilty for not having a problem combining finances, saying, hey, you know, with the grocery bill and rent and stuff like that, but having some hesitation when it comes to the remainder of the student loan debt? Should you feel guilty for not wanting to do this when you get married? In other words, should you feel guilty uh, because you don't want to pay off her student loans? as her new husband. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So let's say there's about 10,000 uh, outstanding by the time we get married. Uh, I mean, that's, I, again, I make three times what she makes. So what do you I make? Understand it. I make 92,000 and she makes 30. Okay. I don't think though, I don't think the word is guilt. I don't think you should feel guilt. I think you, that you should get over it though, because you are going to come together and when people aren't on the same page on their finances, Jake, it is a very difficult proposition to have a healthy and sustained long marriage. It's just very difficult. And so you've already acknowledged that you guys are having the conversation about combining finances. That's the best thing for your relationship. That's the, the numbers bear that out. That's not my opinion. And I think at this point, I get why you have this distaste for it. But it's it, once you guys walk down the aisle, it is our money. And so that means it is our debt. And you didn't bring it. Uh, you make more than her. None of those things need to be factors. The reality is this is now our situation. And combined, we can knock it out quickly and and move forward in life. And you can't be walking around. And again, you're not saying this in a negative way, but... You're, you're calling us and asking for advice, but you don't need to be thinking a lot about how often, how many, how many more times money you make than her. It, that just needs to start to get yeah, out of your mind. This is more on you than it is on her. Yeah. And so I, I don't want you stepping in because truthfully, right now, the way you said all this, I'm like, this guy's not ready for marriage. That's what I'm a little what, nervous about. What happens about. when she's like, hey, I want to add some clothing line item to the budget. And you're like, whoa, not with my money. 
I make three times as much. And so I don't want that. That's going to cause a lot of resentment and friction in the marriage. And so you got to go into this going, hey, I know this isn't ideal, but man, we make great money now. Combined income of 130 grand. We're going to knock out this debt really fast. We're going to have an emergency fund. We're going to be able to get to our dreams. And the amount of the the amount of wealth you're able to build with dual income is amazing. And so look at this like an awesome blessing. There's this amazing person that you love dearly who's bringing all this extra income to the marriage that we can use to build wealth. So that's how I look at yeah, it. I, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. I think also part of the... Has not, it's not necessarily hesitation. I guess it's a little uh, uncomfortable. Is that whatever the remainder is for me? I wouldn't want to say, "Hey, let's continue your payment plan of you know whether it's six hundred a month or whatever it is, and keep accruing the interest." I would want to get that out so, of the yeah, way. Yeah, just knock yeah, it out. Knock it out. Knock it out. As soon we as you're agreed. married, have that money saved. Knock it out and move on with your new life. New life, new chapter. Very exciting stuff. You're good, man, Jake. If you're in, you need to be all in, my friend. Thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me this hour. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Let's go to Sky, who is on the line in New Orleans. George, you ever been to New Orleans? Yes. I used to live in Mobile, so we'd go there for little weekend trips. Beautiful I got area. distracted. I was about ready to take Sky, but he I wants needed a beignet guys. now. I do. I was, you know what I was thinking? A little jambalaya and uh, a beignet for dessert. That's what I was thinking. That'll and hit. I got distracted. Back to Sky, though. Thanks for the patience, Sky. How can we help? Hi, thanks so much for taking my call. You bet. What's up? Um, I'm having a budgeting issue. I have an irregular income, and I make an average about 3000 a month. But sometimes, like some weeks I'll make 500 some weeks I'll make 1000 and it's throwing my budget off. Like each month, I'm trying to like, I, I'm, I'm just confused. Hmm. What kind of work do you do? Um, it's actually a job that I'm trying to leave. It's just a gig job. Okay. What kind of gig is it? It's, it's food delivery. Okay. And you're saying, Hey, some, sometimes it's great. The business is great. I'm getting a lot of gigs and some months it's tough cookies out there. Yeah. Are you, actively, in the summer. are you actively looking for something specific? Yes. I'm actually looking for a graphic design job. Okay, good. Do you have the experience in education or skill set currently? Yes. Yes, I have a marketing degree. Okay. Great. Cool. Now, just because I, I'm, I'm interrupting here because I want George to kind of give you advice on both of these, what what range of income do you think that you will be in when you land one of those jobs? I'm hoping probably like anywhere from like 
Well, I guess around 50 or 60 K. Okay, year. great. Okay. And what pace are you on right now? If you stayed, and I know you're not going to stay in this food delivery job, but what are you, what would you average that out to right now in that range? Oh, yeah, I, I didn't understand the question. I know, I didn't ask it very well. If you look at what you're <laughs> doing from a gig standpoint right now, what are you making per month on oh, average? It's like uh, around 3000 but sometimes it'll dip a little bit below that. All right, so, so that's a good bit below a fifty or $60,000 job. That's I just wanted to ask yeah. that for George because you're going to need to transition. It's like you're going to figure this out, but at the same time, we're hoping we're out of this gig pretty soon, yes? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Do you have any debt? Um, just some, like I have a, a cell phone that I financed and some, some old debts that I'm trying to clean up. Okay. I'm wondering if we find something more consistent right now. Uh, I'll show you, I'll walk you through how to do the irregular income budget. It's pretty simple, but I'm wondering if finding <clears throat> like a retail job may be more helpful right now. Um, I'm just, I'm not like, a, I think another caller said that I'm, I'm like, like my resume, <laughs> I don't know how to like apply that to a retail job it doesn't have to apply yeah okay. retailers want people who show up on time that's who are right. courteous respectful good with customers that's all they care about okay so, i did uh a while back i had submitted an application for whole foods but i never did hear back from them yeah so. well again let me quick thing on this you don't want to just submit applications at this point you want to be mm. you want to be leveraging relationships that you have for some openings and you get a phone call made on your behalf an email on your behalf someone they're looking for something right now because the food delivery the grocery delivery thing right now that's a pretty decently low bar that you can replace that income and that's what George is saying right now okay. while we're waiting to we're not waiting you're actively trying to get the graphic design job uh, we need to get something that's like, boom, they need you in um, at this warehouse or this big box store or whatever, and you're making more, and it's consistent in this season of transition. Delivery okay. is not a good transitionary job unless it's really a hot delivery job because you're already okay. you're already you know making less than you need to make and not only making less it's you can't rely on it it's it's up it's yeah. down and that's really difficult and i just think what george is saying and i'm putting words in his mouth cuz his throat's killing him it's not necessary right now like you don't need something that's up and down in this season we need something that's stable and consistent so that we can budget better and we're much more stable while we're looking for that better job I I did like make a contact with a graphic design guy, but he's not a hiring manager. It was just on LinkedIn, but I'm not sure what to reply back to him. What do you mean you're not sure what to reply back to him? I just uh, I just complimented him on some of his work, but I don't know how to go from that to say how to get like a job at your company. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll just reach out to him and say, hey. Do you know of any openings at your company or other companies? I'm looking to get connected to other professionals in this area. And if you know somebody that'd be willing to have coffee with me or whatever, I mean, that's the game. And, I, and I've got I've got a great resource for you. I'm going to give you a copy of my best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, which is going to walk you through very practically how you begin to connect with people you know in that industry and outside the industry to find things. Um, but as okay. far as the irregular budget, I want to get George in on this because we do need to get you stable right now. Yeah, and I'm going to gift yeah. you one year yeah. of every dollar premium, and here's why. There's a great feature in there called Paycheck Planning that lets you lay out your income for the month, and then it'll show you exactly when you would run out of money based on your income and based on your bills and their due dates. Okay, okay. So that will Thank help. You. But when it comes to a regular income, you want to look at this like a prioritized spending plan, and your four walls come first. That's food, utilities, shelter, transportation. Once that gets paid out, you go to the next priority. That might be your insurance bills or fuel okay. fuel in the car. Then you want to go to the next thing and the next thing until the money runs out. So you may not have money for any of the little luxuries, which it doesn't sound like you're in that spot anyways, living frivolously here. But that allows you mm -hmm. to go, if I only have 1000 bucks this month, here's what I'm covering. I know I have to cover my rent. I know I've got to cover the utilities. And if that's all you can cover that month and a little bit of food, that's okay. And okay. So that will help you kind of understand because a lot of people have a regular income. You're not alone in this. And those people need a budget more than anybody instead of them okay. saying, well, I can't do a budget. I have a regular income. No, you need a, an extra plan for yeah. every single one of those dollars. 
Yeah, I've been using spreadsheets and everything, but it's still, it's just, I don't know. It's just, I get, I, I'm having a hard time sticking to it. Yeah. yeah. Download yeah. the Every Dollar app and we'll hook you up with the premium version that has a whole bunch of features that will walk you through this. Okay. As long Thank you. as well as that proximity principle book. I yes. was thinking the same thing. Yeah. And because that designer knows a bunch of other designers. That's and the And they key. know a bunch of other designers. Yeah. Sky, that's the key. You want to hang out. Here's the proximity principle in a nutshell. In order to do what Sky wants to do, she's got to be around people that are doing it in places where it is happening. So the people are like the one gentleman you reached out to. But we want to stay off LinkedIn as much as possible. Here's what I teach about LinkedIn LinkedIn's a great resource. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is great for information that you can then use for a real life connection. Do you know what I mean? So you've reached out to, Mm -hmm. you know what company it works for, you find out, do I know somebody that works over there? And then I reach out that way. Because a lot of times this stuff on LinkedIn can get lost. And there's a okay. lot of reaching out. And again, I think it's a great resource, but I want it for information so that I can make a deeper real life connection, not just in the app itself. And I think that's, okay. that's something to make sure of. But I want to get around other people that are graphic designers. You know, Mm -hmm. do you have any social clubs that you're a part of or a church or things like that? And you begin to go, hey, do you know anybody? And you begin to find people that are in it and you go, hey, I've got a marketing degree. I'm looking to get back in the game and uh, I'm looking for some opportunities. And the more I do that, eventually opportunities show up on my doorstep, not you trying to kick the door down. And this is a game okay. of averages, right? The more I talk to people in the industry, the more of the they introduce me to more of the right people. They put me in the right places, get me interviews, things of that nature, online communities, things of that nature in your area. I'm getting around okay. those people and in those places. And then over time, opportunities are going to show up. They're going to go, Sky, hey, I got an opportunity for you. And it's all because you stayed present. You stayed connected. That's the key. Not sending out resumes to companies that don't know you because then you just get lost. You're just a nameless, faceless person, and I know you're much more than that. Yeah, that's what I've been doing, and I'm, I'm really frustrated. Well, and it's you like should the be. Longer, you might like, as well be spitting in the wind. You might as well be playing yeah. a lottery, you know, and hoping for that as your retirement strategy. That gets disappointing every Tuesday night when you don't get your numbers called. Mm. Frustration. So hang on the line. We're going to get you the book and uh, read it, do exactly what it tells you to do. And I promise you, opportunity is going to knock on your door very soon, Sky. All right. We got to get out of here for a couple quick commercials. Don't move. He's George Camel. I'm Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by George Camel. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888 Always good to be in studio with George. And uh, uh, we were talking during the break. Uh, I posted a little something on the gram. And I reposted it. It you, was that good. Oh, you reposted you, you Did you? You shared it? Thank I added you, it to my story because yeah. I was like, America needs to hear this. Well, and so so George wanted to talk about it. So George, take it away. Well, you know, we've often pondered what the Ramsey Show is really about. Yeah. Because we've always known it was more than money. Money was often a root symptom. Yep. But if you really think about what is the ethos of this place, mm. what has Dave been building for 30 years? What is at the root of the calls? And you had this post that you found somewhere else on Instagram. Yeah, just saw this little note, and I thought, man, this is so good. And so I posted it. So we can throw it on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. You can check it out, at Ken Coleman. There it is. Yeah, go follow, at Ken Coleman. Always some great content coming from my my friend Ken. But here's, I'll walk you through it. At the top, it says, out of my control. And it starts to list things. The past, the future, the result, what other people think of me, other people's opinion. And in the middle, there's another circle that says, in my control. And it says my words, Mm -hmm. my thoughts, my response, self-awareness, how I treat others. And it was just such a simple yet poignant reminder 
of the core of what we talk about on the show, whether it's your career, yep. your work, your money life, your yeah. relationships, your mental health, it's so easy to focus on those other things, the past, the future. Future is all about anxiety. Past is all about shame and guilt. Yep. The result, something we don't always have control over. What other people think of me, goodness gracious, we make a lot of stupid decisions based on that and other people's opinion. And that comes into play as we see so many people get gazelle intense and they have friends and family members who make fun of them, who question them, say it's a bunch of poppycock and just, you know, whatever they want to say and just make fun of things. And so when we get too hung up in other people's opinions, um, what other people say and think, then it gets our eyes off of the prize. And one of the things we've said for a long time on the show is control the controllables. And this was just a great little illustration. And I just saw it. And I just saw it, and I just said, that's good. And I need to be reminded of that. You need to be reminded oh, absolutely. of that. We oh, are not above this going oh. like, see, we've mastered these virtues. Oh, no. No, we need this constant reminder. Yeah. And, and what's beautiful is that there is a lot in our control. And it yeah. may not feel that way because of inflation and the cost of living. And here's what, man, the politicians and the yeah. corporations. And yeah. when you can just pan back and go, yeah. yes. And in spite of that, I'm going to win anyways. And yeah. I'm going to have a great life anyways. And no one is going to control my destiny That's right. but me. And so think about that. Here's what's in your control, America. Your words, your thoughts, your actions, your response, the self-awareness you have, yeah. and how you treat others. And I think that is a so recipe true. for success if we can focus on that stuff yeah. instead of all this other stuff that's fun to whine about and complain about, but doesn't actually move us forward. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for that great reminder, Ken. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, it's a great reminder of myself. I post the stuff that I need to hear, that I need to read. And uh, if we would get to a point of just only paying attention to what we can control, you'd have a lot less um, anger, a lot less anxiety, a lot less poor financial decisions, poor relationship decisions, because we just go, you know what? I want to focus on what I can control. Good stuff there. Run your own race. Hey, uh, let's go to George in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's perfect. George. I love it, George. We're glad you're here. Talk to George and I. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? I appreciate the call. Well, answering me. Yeah, I was going to say, you called us, but we'll, we'll, we're here. What's going yes, on? Sir. <laughs> hey, so I just have a question. Uh I'm currently renting right now. I've been renting for about four years. My rent just went up this month, so I'm paying about $1,800 a month. Okay. I'm trying to figure out, should I? I do want to buy a house, but I don't like big homes, and I like smaller homes, but they're, even smaller homes are extremely expensive, and I don't like. I don't want to have to pay $300,000 for a three-bedroom. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out, should I stay where I'm at, for a while, try to save up a little bit more money and then see if the market turns around. Or my other option was I was thinking of buying a, a camper and just living in that for however long and just save everything I got. And then if I have enough cash to just, I don't know, put a big down payment down or if the market turns around, just go ahead and buy one. Or so All right, well, let's I'm get not a, really sure what to all do. Right, so let's get a quick run on your numbers. So what was okay. your rent and what did it just go up to? So it was fifteen hundred a month. Okay. Now it's eighteen hundred. All month. right. So it's gone up. And and then what would a camper cost you that, that you've got your eyes on? What are you thinking? What's your price range? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get one used. I don't need one brand new. So I was thinking maybe fourteen, fifteen thousand. All right. So now we've got to come out of pocket. Do you have the fourteen and fifteen thousand? I have ten thousand right now. Okay. Uh, the other four, I got. I, I have like seven cars. I can just. They're all paid for. They're cash. <laughs> I could just sell one of my cars, and I can come up with the rest. What are you doing with all these cars? I love cars. I, I buy them cheap, and I just fix them up on my own. So, uh, hold on don't... a second, George. I right. watch these car flipping shows, so I'm a yeah. minor expert on this. I'm, I'm not okay. an expert at all. I can't even say that with a straight face. I just watch a lot. All right? I'm chair expert. Yeah. If you've got the right cars and you're fixing these up, uh, and you do this cash – you could flip some of these and get that down payment on a house pretty quickly. Am I right or am I wrong? No, you're, you're right. You're right. So let's just talk about the cars you have, not the one you're driving every day. What are these cars okay. worth? Uh, I could probably, like my one car, I could probably get like 8000 for it right now. And I got one more I could probably get like 4000 for. So, All right, there's 12. Uh, what about the other five? You said you uh, had my seven. My truck, I, I do drive back and forth to work, but they're the two cars that I, I can sell right now and I can make some money off of that that are finished. That that can do. And all these are I paid for right now. Yes, yes, they're paid for. Okay, right. there's twelve, George, right there. Yeah. What other debt do you have? 
Just that. That's all I have is my my rent. That's it. That's all I have. Okay, your rent. That, so you, have you have no have debt. No debt. And you have a somewhat of an emergency fund with this ten thousand. Yes. Okay. What is your income? Uh, I make fifteen hundred to fourteen hundred a week after taxes. Okay, so we're talking six grand. Yes, okay. seventy-two thousand okay. a year after taxes. So this fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred, it's not killing you. So I wouldn't go uproot no, your entire not. life over three hundred bucks a month. And I wouldn't buy a camper, George Campbell, would you? It feels like he's just no, throwing cash I know. away. I, I don't, I'm not anti-camper, but I feel like most people that call the show and they're like, I'm going to sell everything and live in the camper. It's a financial hack. I'm like, number one, yeah. it's unsustainable. Number two, it's a depreciating mm. asset. Number three, I just think there's better ways to go about this, and that's to use your future income and have a better quality of life. I have not met people who call on the show like, I lived in a camper for three years. It was the best thing I ever did. They're usually like, now you're a single guy, right? Young guy? No, I'm actually I'm I'm married, but um, you know I've been I've been going through this plan with my wife, but she said as long as you got it mapped out perfectly, I'll go with. So whatever she's just you going do. along for the ride. She's a good woman. She's a good woman, and I don't think she wants to live in a camper. Is she working as well? No, she she stays at home. I I take care of most most of the things. Okay, so you got some kids? Yes, two. So now we're gonna pack that whole family in a camper. This is no, becoming this a worse is a idea. Terrible idea. Yeah, I know. That's why I needed some advice. It sounded And you're good, saying the three bedroom is too much. People. You got two kids, man. Where are you going to put everybody? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. They, he was going to put them like in the camper trouble. until he called us. That's what he was going to do. George, listen yeah. to me. You're a good man. Uh, listen, I know your wife's home with the kids. Maybe she could pick up a part-time job. You can sell these mm -hmm. cars. Be patient right now. Buying a camper is a bad move. You're buying a, a depreciating asset, and it's not going to help. It's going to end up draining your cash, not helping you save cash. And and so I just, it's a bad move. Bad move. Yeah, I'm going to be patient. Let's get a down payment. And if it's a $300,000 three-bedroom, let's aim for that. Let's go for a 15-year fixed rate with a quarter of your take-home pay going towards that mortgage. That might be a few years. Buy yourself some patience. But the 300 bucks, truthfully, is not enough for me to go, dude, sell everything, sell every car, go live in a camper with a four-person family. That's aggressive. Yeah, yeah, not a good idea. You know. But love the spirit. He's not scared of work. No, That's, he's not. That always gives me hope that no, there's like a solution it. here. And I love that he's I love that he's got some cash cars. Maybe save up a little bit of money there, fix those cars up, even if he's moving those cars. Two thousand here, three thousand there. Let's get rid of those. You know, I know he likes them, but right they're now just sitting around. They're he's sitting probably there. Probably paying insurance on these things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting stuff. Thanks for the call, George. Appreciate it. Don't move. More calls coming right up. This is the Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by George Camel. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in. Our scripture of the day comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all things for the glory of God. Our quote today, uh, sad, but uh, appropriate quote. Tony Bennett, the great American crooner, dead at 96, hard to believe. Um, top five artists for me. I know I'm an old soul. I know you'll make fun of that. But uh, Tony Bennett in my top five, absolutely loved his stuff. You love all the crooners, but Tony's up there. Yeah. I mean, I love Frank Sinatra, but but I wasn't alive, you know, or, or, or old enough to uh, know his work uh, personally. But Tony Bennett, one of my all-time favorites, also Harry Connick Jr. But anyway, Tony Bennett, American legend, dead today, 96. This quote, I think if you have a passion for what you do— then there are no limitations on how long or how much you can accomplish. I wow. love that. He Good accomplished stuff. a whole lot in those 96 years. Yes, he did. All right, let's go to Liren. I hope I'm saying that right in Los Angeles. Correct me if I did not get that right. How can we help? 
Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Did Great. I say your name so, right? My, it's pronounced Lee Ron. Lee Ron. All right. I, I'm hooked on phonics usually. I'm not at this moment. So now I've got it. Lee Ron is how we say it. How can we help? Thank you so much for taking my call. I just have, um, I have a question about my current financial situation. I want to know your opinion on the best next steps that I should take. So I'm a mortgage broker. I'm 29 years old. I've been doing mortgages for about seven years. 2021, I did really well because the rates were so low. They were in the 3%. I maybe netted about 150. And I was able to invest into a real estate development that's going to net me about 40000 at the end of August, uh, this August. So this coming up August. And meanwhile, while I was doing so well, I did take a business loan to grow my business. Once the market turned and the interest rates went up, my business slowed down substantially, and I got into a large amount of debt, so probably around $200,000 in debt. And I only netted so far this year from the mortgage business about 30000 So I was either thinking, because it's such irregular income, to either file bankruptcy and close the business and try a new career that is more more uh, stable or possibly take that 30,000 that I'm going to net in the end of August and and possibly you know try to to still grow my business so that's uh, my situation and what is this business it's a mortgage brokerage Oh, so you want to start your own. So you're doing it for someone else right now. And you went, hey, I could do this for myself. And I'm going to go 200 grand into debt to do it. What was the loan for? No. So I've been a mortgage broker. I own my own business for about three and a half years. Okay. I opened yeah. it up. And but what was and the loan the for? The loan was to grow. I was trying to just expand working capital, hire more telemarketers, and better data to reach more uh, refinances. Okay, and that has not panned out. You have anyone working for you? I have um, I have a contract processor. Nobody really on the books, so it's just me. I'm a solopreneur, oh. but that didn't really pan out for me. Okay, well, bankruptcy is never a, the right next step. It's a last ditch effort when they are coming for you and the car's out of the driveway. They're taking your house, and uh, you know Dave Ramsey famously went through bankruptcy back in the '80s and. It was a last-ditch effort. There was nothing else he could do. The bank called the notes. He didn't have time to flip the properties fast enough to sell them off. And so I don't like this as like a eh, clean slate, file bankruptcy. Bankruptcy destroys your life. I mean, this is going to be your record. You go to try to get a job, they're going to pull your credit report and see that you just went through this bankruptcy. And so it's going to hurt your financial life in a big way for a long time. And so if there's anything we can do to avoid this, which generally there is, then I'm doing that. It's so not this A-B that? scenario. Leron, what is that? This is this your last ditch? Is it the only thing you got left, or do you have other moves you can make? So with the irregular income, I have little hope that I could turn my business around, especially when all my income goes to payments towards this debt. So why not just go just work for a mortgage broker? Because most mortgage brokers are commission only, so it's the same scenario. I would make more money as my own solopreneur. Than working for a company. I've got friends in the mortgage business, and they're doing great. And so I don't buy this idea that you can't make more going to work for someone else for a while to get on your feet. So, because they're going to be mean, feeding well, you leads, know. right? Is that your problem right now? No, I have leads. My expense is about thirteen thousand a month. Why? For leads, because I have, my leads cost about seven thousand. My rent for my office costs about three thousand. Dude, ditch the software. office. Stop paying seven grand a month for leads and go work somewhere else. Yeah, but if he does that, I understand that, George. But he still has the two hundred thirty thousand in debt under his current business. Agreed. But if he can go make a hundred thousand working for someone else, you can clean this debt up a whole lot faster. Right. So shut the business down. It's too expensive. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, your expenses are going to compound this debt issue because you're not making ten grand a month. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a yeah. simple math equation. You know, you're in the mortgage business. You understand. You don't want to keep works. digging this hole any deeper. Exactly. Waiting for something to change. So I understand it's not ideal, and you feel like your dreams are crushed because this business didn't work out. But the last thing you want to do is have this sunk cost fallacy where you just keep digging this hole. 
So I don't think bankruptcy is the option. If you need to go to another career field right now, go do that. Go make somewhere you can make six figures and you can clean up 200 grand in a few years doing that. But I would not go to bankruptcy right now. Yeah. I don't think it's, the it's get not out an of, AB scenario. It feels like a get out of jail free car, but it really isn't. Um, and it, it has longevity issues. Like, it's its own prison. Yeah, it really is. I'm sorry to hear that, Leron. Let's go to Brian in Las Vegas. Brian, how can we help? Hi, Ken and George. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. I'll be quick. I'll try to be quick. I am trying to decide whether to continue saving up to go to school for physical therapy uh, as a career change, but I'm already 50 years old. Um, I've been working 70, 80 hours a week over the last year and a half, and I'm just getting uh, really tired mm -hmm. and maybe a little discouraged. Just trying to decide if I'm too old. I'm, I'm thinking this might take me another five to eight years, and I just don't know if I can do it. Just looking for some, sure. maybe some wisdom. Yeah. Well, the question becomes at this stage, why physical therapy? There's a why behind that work, why you're interested. And if we can find something that's connected to that why, that doesn't require us to, to go to physical therapy school because it's very expensive. And I love that you're working crazy to save up. But there's, there's other ways to help people with physical transformation or physical healing that don't require this kind of work. And so the question is, was physical therapy? be an idea that you had that was kind of cool or is it a deep-seated why like there's there's a why behind you why you want to help people this way um yeah i think i just i, I do like helping people and i like the the fact that you're moving around because I, i've been in a job where i sit all day for a long time and right in the call center environment and um, just looking for a change and it would allow that would accomplish both things i can move around i can help people yeah um, okay, I've got some great I news. To... I got great news, Brian. Sure. I'm going to give you some resources. I'm going to give you the Get Clear Career Assessment that I want you to take. And it's going to allow you to really dial in on your unique makeup, okay? What you're good at, what you love to do, and results that motivate you, that'll help. Because it sounds to me like you want to be in the people space. You want to work with people, and you're good at working with people. Is that true? Yes. Okay, great. So helping them physically, helping them financially, helping them nutritionally, helping them in a variety of ways professionally. I want you to take a little bit of a breath and can you slow down that crazy work schedule where you're working all those hours to try to save up money? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of resting right now. Good. I just I got Good. so tired. I get it. So stay in a place of rest and I want you to take the get clear assessment. I'm going to give you my book from paycheck to purpose as well. They are a combo. Think of the assessment as a compass and the book as a guide up the mountain. But I want you to take some time and really dive in. Who are the people I want to help? What problem do they have? And what are the solutions to that problem that I can get qualified for way less time and money? And then I'm going to dive into that. I think you're going to be really happy. Thank you, Brian, for the call. George Campbell, thanks for pressing through. The thanks for bearing issues. with me, America. America. There, he's struggling. One last one. We're going to get him a lozenge. Thanks, Austin and crew, for keeping us on the air. And you, America, for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey baby steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.